In the United States today, we don't really think about hats very often. We might have a few in our closets, but unless we're going to a baseball game or to an event with the royal family, they don't seem much more important than socks. But if you stop to think about it, you realize that what people wear on their heads can tell you a lot about what's going on in their heads. Just take a look and voila, you know where a person is from and how they see themselves, if not more. This has been true for thousands of years. But nowhere were hats more important than Korea in the late 19th century, especially for Korean men. Outsiders who visited Korea at the time called it the land of hats. But as the 20th century loomed, something big happened to Korean hat fashion, something that involved culture, commerce, East and West, imperialism, and resistance. And that something showed how the meaning of a hat can change in an instant, yet still retain its cultural power for centuries. Of course, we'll start at the top, at the head of Korean society during the Joseon Dynasty. Founded in the late 14th century, the Joseon Dynasty exercised both political and cultural power over Korea for 500 years. Joseon rulers were strict Neo-Confucians, and Neo-Confucianism was all about everyone knowing their place. If everyone knew their place, cosmic order would prevail. And for Korean men, your hat indicated, to you and everyone else, exactly where your place in society was. The Joseon government had strict regulations, specifying in detail the kinds of hats that could be worn by every class and every kind of person in Korea. There were specific hats for the yangban, the scholarly elites who ran the government. There were specific hats for the upper middle class, called the jungin, consisting of bureaucrats, administrators, and commercial traders who were highly educated and skilled. There were specific hats for the sangmin, who were the farmers, craftsmen, and merchants. And more! There were specific hats for almost everyone and anyone in society, from the highest elites to the lowest merchants, from newborn babies to venerated old gentlemen. A hat was not just an article of clothing. It was an important symbol of social status and authority, as well as a badge of ceremony. And every hat was important. Percival Lowell, an American traveler, called Korea the land of hats in 1883. In his account of his journey, he wrote, Especially in Korea, the land of hats is the hat honored. Indeed, it is there that one first realizes the infinite possibilities of the genus hat. No Korean can in decency appear without it. On entering a house, he and his hat go in together. As he sits down to eat, he divests himself of his outer garments that he may eat with the greater freedom, but his hat stays on. And the fact that an American was visiting Korea tells us something important as well. By the 1880s, Western technology, products, and ideas were starting to spread to Korea in a big way. They were often brought to Korea through contact with Japan, which at the time was looking to expand its own Western-style empire in East Asia. Western influence and Japanese imperialism profoundly changed Korea, including the hats. But to understand how the hats changed, we've got to start just underneath with the hair. For hundreds of years, Korean men had worn their hair long and held it up in what was called a sangtu, or a top knot. It was more than just a style. Wearing one's hair in a sangtu was literally what separated the men from the boys in Korea. It was the symbol of adult masculinity. But as Western ideas and influences continued to saturate Korea, Korean leaders wanted their country to be more, quote unquote, modern. And to be modern, you had to look modern. So in 1895, Korean reformers, with the support of Japanese imperial occupiers, passed the Haircut Act, which outlawed the top knot. The effect was seismic. There was an uproar across society, and many compared the law to an act of national castration. However, the population had little choice but to obey it. For the first time in 500 years, Korean men now found themselves with totally unfamiliar short hair. And now, enforced by the government, the traditional ways of expressing masculinity were out the door, and Korean men were confused about fashion. Hat wearing nearly disappeared. Uncertain about their new short hair and the sudden urgency to seem modern, Korean men still looked for a way to show the world they were men, and what kind of men they were. As they wrestled with this uncertainty, they saw advertisements for a new kind of hat, the Western-style hat. Japanese companies imported Western-style hats to Korea, and retailers heavily advertised them as just the thing that every new and modern Korean man should have. Soon, almost every kind of Western men's hat was popular in Korea, 
Another keen-eyed foreigner who came through Korea in the mid-20th century, the Scottish artist and writer Elizabeth Keith, witnessed this moment of cultural and sartorial change. Hats are important in Korea. Koreans are wearing tall hats, round hats, ribbons, every kind of hat. However, all these old customs are changing, and today Korean men, young and old, are wearing ugly modern felt hats, just like other men. While Keith may have preferred the aesthetic of traditional Korean hats, she picked up on something crucial. Western influence and Japanese imperialism had not destroyed Korean men's connection to hats. And at first glance, it may have looked as if Korean men had simply swapped out one hat for another, but that wasn't the case. For instance, take a look at this Western-style bowler hat. It may look like the kind of ordinary bowler hat that many American men in the 1880s and 1890s wore every day, but if you look a little closer, you'll see there's more to it. Western bowler hats were made out of felt, but this was made in a totally different way, out of horsehair, the material with which many traditional Korean hats were made. Standard bowler hats were plain. The crown of this bowler is decorated with eight cranes. This was a motif usually found on a traditional Korean hat called a kat, which were worn by married, upper-class Joseon officials. The origins of this hat are a mystery. Currently, it resides in the collection of the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. Was it picked up in Korea by our friend Percival Lowell? Or perhaps it once belonged to Yu Kil Jun, a Korean government official who came to the United States in 1883 to study American government and industry. Though the origins of this hat are a mystery, we do have a pretty clear sense of why this hat was made. It was meant to say something about the person who wore it. Whoever wore this hat is telling the world that he was both modern and Western, that he was from the upper class and perhaps married, and that he was deeply connected to and knowledgeable of Korean traditions, like the kat. Instead of blindly accepting these hats from the West, Korean men had transformed them into something new. And they were wearing hats in a whole new way. During the Joseon period, if you were a Korean man, you didn't have much choice in what hat you wore. Customs and laws decided that for you. It was illegal for a merchant to wear the same kind of hat as a scholar. But Western hats upended this order. There were no rules. A dock worker could wear the same kind of hat as the president. Plus, both of them could wear different kinds of hats on different days. Men could also mix Western-style hats with elements of traditional Korean clothing. And that's just what they did. By the early 20th century, Korean men across ages and classes had re-embraced hats. There was less variety, but there was a greater flexibility. Korean men were living at a moment of confluence, of centuries of Korean tradition, of Japanese rule and colonialism, and of a massive influx of Western ideas. Yet, even as new ideas of what a modern man should be were imposed upon them, Korean men, through ingenuity and creativity, still managed to present themselves and define their masculinity. Hats remained a source of pride and dignity. And now, almost 140 years after East met West in Korea, hats still play a crucial part in how Korean men present themselves to the world. So, the next time you see a guy wearing a hat you've never seen before, or maybe when you consider turning your own ball cap just a little bit off-center, well, there might be a whole lot more to it than just a bad hair day.